My name is Mark Jager. In this six-part tutorial, I'm explaining and demonstrating time-lapse using a red DSMC2. Here are the topics in each part. Let's dive into part one. Time-lapse photography generates a series of still images taken at regular intervals where the frame capture rate is slower than the playback frame rate. This has the effect of appearing to compress time and speed up action. If your project is 24 frames per second, but you record at one frame per second, any motion in the scene will appear 24 times faster than real time. With time compression, slow movement like slow moving clouds can be more easily seen, where in real time the motion is often so slow it's difficult to see. The degree of time compression is very influential on the look of your time lapse video. You will want to contemplate and experiment to find your look of choice. Now videographers generally use a 180 degree shutter. This is a shutter speed of 1 divided by 2 times the number of frames per second. The result is acceptable and generally pleasing motion blur of moving objects. The motion blur helps convince our brains that the frame to frame transitions are smooth. They're not, but we perceive them as such. Now let's look at some video of people walking through a mall. Here you can see the effect of changes in the shutter speed, which changes the motion blur. The next clips show interval changes. You can see the appearance of faster and faster motion as the interval increases. Sometimes the people almost disappear. This means the 180 degree shutter must be taken with the proverbial grain of salt. It is likely that you will use shorter exposures for long interval time lapse than the 180 degree shutter would suggest. Here's an example from Yosemite National Park that I shot using a 7 second interval. The shutter speed started at 1 2000th second but ended at 1 1 25th, all to control the light. Let's examine how shutter works with a traffic scene. Here's the scene shot as normal video so you can see real time. I shot time lapse at a series of settings to demonstrate the differing looks you get when you change shutter speed. Here are still photographs taken from the middle of the time lapse sequence. As the shutter time increases, the motion blur increases. Now, examine the time lapse clips. Notice that at short shutter times, the motion is staccato. As you get to the 180 degree shutter, 1 50th, the motion smooths out. As the shutter time increases further, the blur continues to increase, but it's not as discernible as in the stills. The choice for time compression and motion blur is fundamental. It is important that you consider your end goal and select interval and shutter speed accordingly. Stay tuned for part two, where I take the theory and apply it using the continuous recording mode. Thanks for watching.